Hello and welcome back to another end of other video. Today we are talking about Tropical Storm K, which at the moment could impact areas of Southern California. So right now the National Hurricane Center is saying that Tropical Storm K has maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour, minimum central pressure of 1,000 millibars, and is moving to the west-northwest at 14 miles per hour. So let's take a look at the warnings and cone for this storm. Right now you can see the storm is just off the southwest coast of Mexico, but the storm is projected to take a turn to the north, strengthen even up to a Category 2 hurricane, according to the National Hurricane Center, and make its way up toward California. Here is the storm. This is 7 p.m. Eastern on Friday, and here is Southern California. So, definitely in the margin of error here. Now, the main forecast line is showing this storm eventually starting to move away from California, but there is a chance that Southern California could stay within the cone, the area of possibility where the center of the storm could possibly go. So, this is definitely something that we do have to look out for. Now, the wind speed probabilities are not showing yet, any possibilities of tropical storm force winds in Southern California, but we are far enough out where either way we're not 100% sure. But right now we are showing at least a 70% chance of tropical storm force winds all the way up toward Baja, California. So definitely going to be seeing this uh, generally start to increase. Right, as we start to move two, three, four, five days out, the uncertainty levels are going to continue to go up. So, the closer we do get to this storm, uh, right around maybe Wednesday, we should know very, very well if this storm will have impacts on Southern California or not. But the impacts are definitely going to be felt in areas of Baja, California. This storm is going to remain very close to Baja, California. So here are the key messages for this storm. Number one, although the center of K is expected to stay offshore, heavy rainfall could lead to localized flash flooding in portions of southwestern Mexico over the next few days. K is forecast to strengthen into a hurricane while it moves northward toward the Baja California Peninsula later this week. While the details of the long-range track and intensity forecast are uncertain, there is a risk of wind and rainfall impacts in the Baja California Peninsula during the middle and latter parts of the week. Interest there should closely monitor updates to the forecast as tropical storm or hurricane watches could be required Sunday night or Monday. So let's move on here to the satellite imagery for this storm. You can see the broader area of low pressure starting to condense in there. We have some thunderstorm development around the center of the storm. But one of the main factors for this storm is that it's a very big storm. Uh, we have thunderstorms coming all the way into parts of central Mexico. So that size could eventually lead to more expansive impacts even as the storm continues to get closer to the United States. So we're going to do our uh, current storm information from both Tropical Tidbits and Weather Nerds, starting off here with our global hurricane models. Now, the individual spaghetti strands, as I like to call them, are not showing this going towards Southern California, actually taking a sharp turn to the west before that happens at about 30 degrees north. But as we moved here, this is G GEFS ensemble model, and you can see some of those individual spaghetti strains, as I like to call them, have this storm going into the Gulf of California where it could maintain some of that strength and move into areas such as Arizona or Southern California, areas that if this does happen, will see major impacts. These areas don't see tropical systems almost ever. It takes a very specific storm to impact areas of the Southwest United States in a tropical fashion. So this is definitely an oddity here that we are even remotely talking about a storm that could make its way up to California or Arizona. 
The GEPS Ensemble is also showing a few of those spaghetti strands staying in the Gulf of California and moving up towards Arizona. But again, in both of these models, as well as our global hurricane models, the medians here show that sharp westerly turn at about 30, 30 degrees to the north. So sometime around Thursday, Friday, right now that is the forecast, that this storm will bear to the west and stay away from Southern California, which is a good sign here. The European model also showing that turn to the west a little bit earlier this time, more towards that five-day mark, uh, which could line it up with that uh, Thursday time frame. So that is also good news. Now, here is our intensity guidance. This is another thing that is a key part of this storm, is this storm is going to be moving to the north. And as we know with East Pacific hurricanes, as a storm moves further and further to the north, it's going to be moving into cooler and cooler waters. And usually once a storm makes it above the 20 degrees north parallel, it starts to lose strength very quickly. Now, if we look at some of these ensembles, 20 degrees north is right around here. So if this storm even gets to Baja, California, it might start declining in strength, or at least the conditions are typically not as favorable for tropical development in those regions. But right now, the intensity guidance is showing this remaining a tropical storm for up to 36 hours, and eventually crossing into Category 1 and even Category 2 strength by 72 hours, so about three days from now. And then that is when the storm generally peaks, and we start to see the storm start to digress back to a tropical storm and eventually a tropical depression after that point. Now, there are some outliers here. We have areas here below this curve. We have a few models there barely getting the storm out of tropical storm strength, having the storm stay at tropical storm strength, maybe even low tropical storm strength. But we also have models here projecting the storm as a Category 3 major hurricane. So we definitely have a lot of range with this storm, which we don't typically see for storms this time and this location in the year. Now, even though we're getting toward the peak of hurricane season, the East Pacific and the Atlantic kind of balance back and forth, right? When the East Pacific is inactive, usually the Atlantic is active. When the A Atlantic is inactive, the East Pacific is active. So right now we're seeing an active Atlantic, so you would think the East Pacific would be relatively inactive, but yet we have a possibility of a Southern California tropical system. Speaking of which, let's take a look here. This is the GFS. The GFS is showing the storm taking that turn to the north, dropping all the way down to 946 millibars, moving past Baja, California, and up towards Southern California, where you could see some impacts there, uh, maybe some outer bands hitting areas such as San Diego and maybe even Los Angeles. So definitely something that we do have to watch out for there uh, with the total accumulated precipitation staying a below two inches of rainfall. But again, this could have some drought relief aspects of it, which will be very beneficial to the area. So we definitely are not really rooting for the storm to go this way, but it wouldn't hurt. Now, in terms of wind speeds, as the storm passes by California, really not going to see huge amounts of strong winds. Uh, maybe some wind speeds upwards of 35 miles an hour max. Uh, that's sustained winds, not gusts. But along the Baja California Peninsula, we could see hurricane force sustained winds, especially in central Baja here, where we could see those purples, that is at least category one strength here. So the GFS is definitely having this system boom, but what about the European model? We usually talk about the European model as the realist in the group, kind of a more bearish model, but is typically more accurate. 
Now the European model does have this continuing to strengthen, also a broad area of low pressure, having the storm dip all the way down to 979 millibars, so still very strong. Moving up toward Baja, now let's take this here, and this continues to make its way up and starts to turn to the west around Saturday. Now, again, in this scenario, there are outer bands that do impact Southern California. So, those total accumulated precipitation numbers show about maybe a half an inch of rainfall in California. Again, less moisture in California comparing the two models. Now, there's another thing we have to take into account here is those wind speeds. And according to the European model, really no major wind speeds here that are going to be ticking up in Southern California. But again, Baja California could see high tropical storm force or low hurricane force wind gusts as this storm moves up to the north. So definitely a system that we have to watch here. We typically don't talk about East Pacific uh, tropical systems having impacts on the United States unless they're heading toward Hawaii. But this is one of those odd cases where we could see this storm head up toward Southern California, potentially maybe even Arizona, and that could have potentially major impacts on areas that aren't used to receiving tropical systems. So stay tuned here for any more updates on Tropical Storm K and how it progresses. I will be continuing to update uh, you guys based on the latest updates in the models on this channel. I also update you guys on the Atlantic as well as anything going on in the United States. So stay tuned here by subscribing and hitting that bell so you never miss another weather update. But that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.